you're watching Overdrive, Yamaha has recently updated its low capacity motorcycles which are on sale in India. We recently got a chance to ride the Yamaha FZX in Jaipur in Rajasthan city. The motorcycle now comes with a new paint scheme. It also gets LED indicators and traction control. I don't know if this is what the call of the blue means where a bunch of Yama riders come together and go on a group ride. I don't know if it means that or not. Anyway, we are here to ride the new FTX. It's updated for 2023. It hopes to justify its tall asking price. So let me quickly show you what those changes are. Come take a look. Our ride from the heart of Jaipur to the Amer Fort and then onward to the Samod Palace wasn't a very long one, but was enough to talk about the minimal yet meaningful additions made to the new FZX. Let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? The FZX, not the prettiest of motorcycles. Of course, all these elements, the round headlight, the beefy tank, these radiator shrouds for a radiator that does not exist, the big midship exhaust as they like to call it, that big ribbed seat, all these elements in individual terms would work quite well. But when they come together on this motorcycle, because they are not proportionate, because it's not a balanced design, somehow, the design just looks awkward, ungainly. However, the masses seem to love it. They have been literally lapping this motorcycle. They have been showering love on it just the way they did on the first FZ16. So I think it works for them. And for people who love this design, there is now a new paint scheme to choose from. You get this matte blue with the golden rims. And whether or not I like the design, I certainly like this particular paint combination. I think it looks quite smart. There are many bits that make the FZX a likeable package though. Like the obedient and reliable engine for example, which doesn't pack in class leading power but has enough torque for power commuting, pulling overtakes at highway speeds without losing breath and carrying decent speeds around winding roads to keep a newbie rider happy. The chassis complements with a good balance and while the seat looks disproportionate for the scrambler inspired styling, it does provide decent comfort for two people. It still has a bit of a wobbly feel at the pillion end, but on the rider side, I had no discomfort of any kind, at least on this 60 odd kilometer ride. When you see a bit of a block pattern like that on the tires and then a scrambler inspired styling, you expect a nice, supple ride quality, especially on the broken surfaces. However, this motorcycle, it does feel a bit firm, especially here at the Amer Fort. You have a bit of hairpins coming up and it's all cobbled stone kind of a pathway and there this motorcycle just jitters so much there is so much of uh, you know these jolts coming to your backside that clearly shows that the ride quality is not that great out on the road it still is agreeable but the moment you have roads that are riddled with potholes the ride quality can leave you wanting for a bit more give a bit more supple feeling from it if you want to go scrambling on the fcx you will notice that the bulky tank and the forward set footpecks make it hard to stand and ride. And this big tank also makes the motorcycle feel top heavy. That said, the low seat and the relatively light nature of the motorcycle make it easy to sit down and ride through dirt and sand though. While this is no dirt bike or scrambler, it will tackle dirt roads and broken pathways with ease. To that effect, there's also a thin but usable bash plate underneath. And when riding off the road, don't forget to turn off the new feature on the bike, traction control, to avoid any abrupt power cuts. The changes aren't purely cosmetic. There are some mechanical changes too, especially in the safety department. You now get TCS or traction control system. Now here in Rajasthan, there's a lot of sand on the roads, through the corners. I even tried riding the motorcycle on surfaces like these but I never really saw the traction control light flashing, never really felt the power cutting out anywhere. So that only can mean two things. One, that the TCS is working very discreetly, it's not really marring the 
uh, riding fun anywhere at all or it could mean that on a machine like this which has power figures comparable to a 125 you probably don't need the traction control system at all you never really find use for it but like i always say a safety net is a good feature to have and this one now has better safety features than some of its competition so that is good news I wish they had added a gear position indicator though to the LCD instrumentation, but maybe that would come in the next update. As it stands right now, the 2023 FZX, like its predecessor, comes at a premium, but the formula seems to have worked well with the target audience and the new bike has made that formula a bit more appealing now. So the LED turn blinkers and the traction control system is not exclusive to this motorcycle. They have actually used it on all the 150cc motorcycles, starting from this all the way up to even the R15M. So with that, they are able to sort of distribute the costs, so to say, and which is why the sum of all the additions that you see on this updated motorcycle will only cost you between two to 4,000 rupees on top of the last year's outgoing model. So I think that's a very small price to pay for the added safety that you get for this new motorcycle. As far as the looks go, like I already said, I'm not a big fan of it, but there seem to be a lot of people who like the motorcycle. And if you're one of those, now this is a more compelling buy than last year's bike. It's time for us to take our final commercial break here on the show, but coming up on the other side, we tell you all about the new Harley Davidson Street Glide Special.